Hello, and welcome back to another video. My name is Jake the Genealogist, and I am very, very sorry about my very long hiatus. I've taken about a month-long hiatus. I've been super, super, super busy um, the last month, um, but hopefully I'll be back to making videos on a pretty regular schedule, so you can expect that. Um, also, secondly, we just hit 400 subscribers, in fact, the day I'm recording this video, so that's, that's really awesome, and, um, thank you for helping me get that far, I didn't think I'd be able to get that far on this channel, but, um, more about that at the end of the video. But anyways, in today's video, we're going to be going over the family tree of the kings of Armenia, and, um, so... One thing to denote here, so the history of Armenia uh, dates back really thousands of years. However, in this video, I'm really going to only cover the more modern Armenian dynasties. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see the ancient ones down in the comments, because I can definitely do those at a later date. But anyways, um, in this video, so I'm going to start in the year 684, when the Ar Emirate of Armenia was actually started. So, this Emirate was ruled by the Bagratid dynasty. Uh, fun fact, this dynasty reputedly had a junior branch who became the Bagrationi dynasty, hope I'm pronouncing that right, that ruled over Georgia, another kingdom in the Caucasus, uh, for actually 800 years. Um, and I'll link a video of mine that I did about that dynasty. Um, but anyways, um, so this dynasty um, had already really existed for about 300 years, but it finally took control of the fledgling emirate under Prince Ashot II right here to actually become a big power in the region. Now, um, he was actually uh, succeeded by his nephew right here, Simbot VI, right here, um, and he was in turn succeeded by his two nephews, Sahak the Third and Ashat the Third, known as the Blind. Now, um, this succession continued until the reign of this guy, Ashat the Fifth, um, and he was really the first great ruler of the Bagratid dynasty, as evidenced by his epithet right here, and he started the second Armenian Golden Age, actually. Um, now, well into his reign in 884, he actually changed his title to become not a prince, but actually the first king of Armenia under the Bagratids. And um, he also reset the reignal numbers in the family, and he became Ashot I now. And now, he was succeeded by his son, Simbot I, known as the Martyr, for a pretty good reason, because he was actually tortured and to death by his um, by the emir of the Sajid dynasty of Azerbaijan, which is actually not in the modern-day country of Azerbaijan, but in fact a region in Iran. Um, now, he was succeeded uh, by his two sons, Ashat the Iron, who, during his reign, um, he faced a lot of different kinds of rebellions and pretenders, uh, but he fought them off really effectively. Um, and... Um, on the contrary, his brother Abbas right here uh, had a really, really peaceful reign. Literally nothing happened, and it was probably some of the most prosperous time in Armenians or in Armenia's history. Now, by the way, it's actually worth noting that the Armenian kings actually like to call themselves Shahan Shah, literally meaning King of Kings. Um, the Persian rulers also like to use this title as well. Now, by 979... Another dynasty, um, which was actually um, split off, it was the Kyrikian dynasty, named after its first ruler, um, pretty typical, and um, it formed a new kind of vassal kingdom separate from Armenia called the Kingdom of Tashir Zogaret. Um, now, this kingdom later ended in 1118 right here, and it's not too significant. Um, it's also worth noting there was another vassal kingdom called the Kingdom of Kars, um, which actually um, kind of gave um, some of these Armenian kings some trouble, but I decided not to put it on the family tree. But anyways, so Bagratid rule ended in 1045, actually, with the deposition of the juvenile ruler Gagik II right here by the Byzantines. Now, the next Armenian 
kind of dynasty to form was, in fact, not actually in Armenia, but it was actually in Turkey, surprisingly enough. Now, basically what happened is a lot of refugees uh, from the Seljuk Empire's takeover of Armenia actually fled and formed a new kingdom centered around the capital of Tarsus, which later moved to Sis. Now, unlike the previous Persian influence of the Bagratid dynasty, this new Rubenid dynasty, named after the first ruler, once again, was actually a crusader state and considered themselves to be devoutly Christian. Now, this new kingdom was called Cilicia, and this dynasty was actually considered by many to be descended from the Bagratids, but I don't really have any genealogical evidence for that, so take it with a grain of salt. Now... After the death of Reuben I right here in 1095, he was succeeded by his son, Constantine I right here. Um, now, he gave support to the Crusaders during the First Crusade, um, during the Siege of Antioch. Now, after his death, he was succeeded in turn by his two sons, Phoros I and Leo I, with the short-lived Constantine II in between them. Now, it's worth noting that if you thought King of Kings was a cool title, the title actually used by the Lords of Cilicia was Lord of the Mountains. Now, that is cool as hell. Um, now, by the rule of Leo II right here, known as the Magnificent, he once again transitioned his title from Lord to King, much like Ashot the Great mentioned previously. Now, he was succeeded by his daughter, Isabella, um, who actually co-ruled with her husband, um, who was actually part of a rival faction, the Hephamids. Now, this actually became the new dynasty to replace the Rubenids um, in Armenia, or Cilicia. Now, his son, um, Leo III, and his wife, Kiran de Lamprin, right here, had a lot of children. In fact, uh, five of them, in total, actually ruled over Cilicia. Um, none of them actually lasted that long, though. Um, this guy, he from the second right here, ruled on three separate occasions, um, usurping the throne from his relatives numerous times. Um, now, the dynasty of the Hephamid finally ended in um, with the death of this guy, Leo V, um, who was the son of King Ocean, right here, in 1341. Now, the Hephamids were succeeded by the Lusignan dynasty, right here, of French origin, who were um, descended from a daughter of Leo III, right here, uh, before actually being swiftly succeeded only two years later by the new Nagir dynasty, right here, um, descended from the brother of Hephum I. And this dynasty only lasted about 30 years, um, with the Lusignan dynasty actually taking power once again under King Leo VI, right here, before actually being ended once again two years later, by the Mamluk dynasty of Egypt, who is conquering the area. And that about puts a wrap on the kings of Armenia. Um, and they really didn't really have an independent state after this, whether it was located in Armenia or not, until um, really the modern day, when it actually kind of became an independent country. Now, uh, I'm going to say thank you guys for watching this video, and once again, thank you very much for giving me this is 400 subscribers which is a pretty amazing number and um, I'll see you all later goodbye